could do it in three. No? Oh, yeah. oh, let's get there. Oh, now you have a side here. Hey, it's better. Four, that's not bad. This is hot. All right. Good 
If you could come out the backside of it and realize what just happened, you will be so much more appreciative of life once you go through it. Has anybody in here gone through the wilderness? Just raise your hand. In any time of your life. And you feel so alone, and you feel like you're the only person going through something, or you've had a tragedy in your life, and you, you just feel lost. You feel lost. But if you can get through that, uh, someone once told me, you want to see the happiest people in the, in the world? He said, go into a room of people who have been through war, people who have survived cancer, or survive some health thing, and they come off the backside of that, and they're so much more appreciative of life. And that's me, because probably in my mid twenties, I figured it out. I needed needed to get back out of the wilderness, and I think all of us have done that. All of us have been through that. Some of you have lost children. Some of you have gone through bad relationships. Some of you have had health or, or made stupid mistakes, which, trust me, I'm not up here judging anybody because I've made as many stupid mistakes as anybody. But I think the key is, once you get there, is how do you get out? And once you get out, appreciate everything you have. I have been totally blessed in my life. I came here in the fall of 1988, and I'm retiring this year. And, and a lot of people, a lot of people come up to me and go, "Are you counting the days?" And I'm not. I have people count the days for me sometimes. I had someone come up to me the other day and go, "Hey, do you know you only have 10 Mondays of school left?" I said, "Really? I'm in mean, my busy time now." Like the Thomas says, "You know I'm on track right now." We went through that together. I mean, go through that time. And I, I tell kids, I've told, I've told Noah, and I've told Caden, and I said, we're starting fourth quarter now. Okay? This isn't the time to relax. This is, this is the time to move ahead. If you run a marathon and you get to the last mile, do you want to, like, walk in or do you want to run in? Do you want to finish? And that's our lives. That's your life. You're never finished. You got to keep poking on. And so sometimes I say to myself, why am I here? Now, this is me. I'm not telling you, this is me. Okay. Here are my reasons for being here. I always went to church. I grew up going to church. Right? Fellowship with other people. My mom is eight, going to be 88. One of the main reasons she goes to church is just to be with people. Have that fellowship with people. Um, feel guilty if I'm not there. And if, has that ever happened to you guys? It happens to me all the time. Especially when I'm out golfing. <laughs> In a tournament. And the bell rings. I'm going... Church is starting. I never get a good shot after that. <laughs> it, it just doesn't work. Um, you want to raise your kids in this environment. Um, I need to be here. There's a reason. I need to be here. Comfort. Come here for comfort. Like today, I, I'm doing the double header. I was just over at Thorpe when I came here. You know, and, and it, it's comforting. Or it might be to serve. Maybe, like now I'm on the church council. Serve. It's great people. Awesome people. It's fun to be around awesome people. Whether I'm here or at church or at anything. The kids. It's awesome. Um, but the thing that I, that I got out of today and reading the gospel is John 3.16. Do you guys remember when there used to be a guy on TV 
at a sporting event that would wear a white t-shirt and he'd have John 316 on the t-shirt and he had a big afro wig that was a rainbow. You guys ever remember that guy? He'd be everywhere. I'm wondering there had to be more than one afro guy. Because he was everywhere. He would be at the Indy 500 or he would be at the Super Bowl. He was at John 316. And us people who have been to church our whole life, this, you don't even probably remember when you first heard this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I don't remember when I first heard that, but I know I've heard it a lot. Anyway, I get a kick out of is people who are jerks. People who are not necessarily good people or hypocrites that they'll play basketball and they'll put a they'll put a uh, say a Bible verse on their tennis shoes or something like that. And then you watch them and see how they act in real life and you're going, what is that? That bugs me. It bugs me. I, I, there are some, there's a lot of people that after a big football game they'll say, I first want to thank God. Thank God they say that. But do they really mean it? Do they really mean that? Or is it just the cliche that they're going to say? You know, I don't want to be that. I am not the best Christian in this room. I'll guarantee you that. I mean, if you've been around me, I am blunt about certain things. Keely knows it. No one knows it. But I don't look at that as being unchristian necessarily. I look at that as guiding. This is what you need to do. Um, some people don't want that. Some people don't want to hear that. And it, you, you guys have always heard this. Never argue about religion and politics. You ever notice? Nothing usually comes good from that. Um, I, I find comfort in the fact that not only do I want that, that God wants me and my loved ones. You know, people like to be a part of groups. I mean, why do you think there's so much gang violence in this world? They want to be accepted and be part of a group. And for you parents who bring your kids here, there's no guarantees what they'll be thinking afterwards, but they are part of a group here. If kids aren't part of something, they'll find something to be a part of, and it isn't always good, but they'll, they will. I say it all the time. Do you want to know how you know if a kid's in trouble or not? For me, it's easy. Go to a pep rally. You go to a pep rally, and 95% of the people are right there, they're involved. And then there's always five, six, seven, eight up in the corner who aren't bought into anything. I always told people that. If, if you want to go to a place where people are not bought in, that's where you're going to have the problems and not be a part of it. Why do you think that in school, I can really tell kids that have been in church. I don't ask them, but I can tell they have been. I can tell how they act. I can tell what they're thinking. I mean, and, and I, I have said this a couple of times to a kid. I go, do you go to church? And they go, no. And I go, why not? Well, my parents never went to church. I never went to church. I never did this. We're, we're lacking there, guys. This is enrollment for kids in Sunday school. Well, here, we're doing an outstanding job. It's, I mean, we've got more kids in this church now than we've had in a long time. But if you go out into the public and you, go, you see what I see, if I were to say, raise your hand in class, if you go to church, there's less hands going up. And just getting there is half the problem. Just getting there. Um, and we're the same. I'm the same way. 
I'm not going to sit here. I doubt things a lot. I'm going, really? You know, people will say something, and they'll, and they'll say something about life. When you really look at this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's unbelievable, if you think about it. That's unbelievable. And, but still, I get doubts sometimes. I mean, I get doubts like something will happen and I'm going, why? I mean, there are days I wake up, not many, I'm very lucky, but there are days I wake up and I used to look at my dog and go, I wish I could be him today. <laughs> I wish I could just sit there, nap, play with the ball, not have any worries. I don't do it as much anymore because that dog I used to say that about, he's blind, can't hear very good, I have to put a diaper on him. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm not wishing up him. But you know what I mean? There's days that you start the day and you go, oh my word, what's going to happen today? What is going to happen? What am I going to feel like? What am I... What, what, how am I going to deal with this? Especially if it's something at the end of the day. Say you get up in the morning, and at 7 o'clock at night, you've got to deal with something. And you have to go that whole day. Any of you guys get in trouble when you're a kid, and your, your dad said something like, just wait till you get home. What did you think about all day? You thought about that all day. I mean, one time I took the lawnmower. My dad bought a new lawnmower. And I'm driving this lawnmower, and it's new. I mean, and when you're like my age, new stuff, you didn't get as much new stuff as you guys get. I mean, we got this new lawnmower, that's a big deal. And I'm driving it and going around the garage, and then uh, I hit something metal, I think. And I turned around, and when I turned around, I, I start, I must have swerved and hit this new lawnmower. First time I want it. Right in the corner of the garage. And it just rearranged it. <laughs> and I go, okay. So I took it out into the grove and hid it. <laughs> I, hid the, I hid the lawnmower. And I had to go to, I had a game. I was literally, I had a game. So I hid it, went inside. Mom took me to the bus, went to the game. No kidding. I'm, I'm up the bat, first I'm the leadoff hitter, up the bat, and this kid drills me a fastball right in my wheelhouse, and I pop it over the fence, and I'm, 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 I'm the guy now. I'm running around, running around, cross home plate, my dad's sitting right there, and I go, how do you like that, dad? He goes, almost as much as I like the lawnmower in the grove. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, one time, my dad never asked me to do work on the farm if I had something going on in school. But we're in the spring and my dad goes, uh, hey, can you come out and feel call bait in front of me so I can plan? I said, no problem, dad. I'll say, I'll, I can stay out here all day if you want me to. No. You leave. I'll tell you when to leave and you don't be late to school. So I get out there and I'm call waiting, and it gets, I have to leave for school about 7.30, and it's like 7.28, and I'm at the end of a round. And I, I see my dad out of the corner of my eyes pointing to the house and I act like I didn't see him. So I made, I made another round. So I'm going making a round, and I come back, and now he's really not coming with me. So I said, well, I better put it, lift it up, get in road here, get to the house. I'm driving around, we have this old crib here, with this old crib, and I, I'm going to cut it, there's nothing there. For some weird reason, my dad parked his truck there, and I'm coming around, I'm coming around, I'm, I'm flying here, and I got wings on and everything, and I see it, and I swerve, and I think I made it, except the back part caught the bumper of my dad's truck, and ripped it off. And I go park, come to the bumper, stick it back up so it stays, and go to school. 
And I'm thinking about that all day. So I had practice, got home, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm going, Dad, Dad would test me. He would want me to tell him before he caught me. So I'm sitting there, and I'm just waiting to spring it on him. So now I'm being like really a brown nose. Dad, how was your day today? <laughs> Mom, did you have a good day today? Um, you, know, you know how it is. How you kids do that crap, right? <laughs> and your mom and dad are going, what does he want? What does she want? So I'm sitting there waiting, waiting. I'm waiting for God to provide a miracle for me. So I go to dad, how was your day today? And he goes, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened to me at the bank today. I drove my truck there, and he said these were his exact words. Old lady Olson backed into my truck and knocked my bumper off. <laughs> And I said, really? <laughs> That's the only time I fooled my dad. I thought about it when he was dying to tell me. But I know. Let's leave that alone. But, I don't know why I told you that. But, um, I, I just say this for me. And, and, and you young kids, some of the older people may do this, may not. But every Sunday, we say the Apostles' Creed. We say the Lord's Prayer. And I am not always sure I know what I'm saying. I just say it. Because we're, we're in the habit of saying it. I mean, we could probably walk in a straight line, keep our eyes closed, and say the Lord's Prayer and not miss it. Right? I mean, you can do that. And I just challenge myself, because I tell the kids, like Noah this year, I've told you guys this a lot, you've got to comprehend what you read, comprehend what you see, and comprehend what you hear. The stupidest thing we do in school is see how fast kids can read. That's dumb. To me, it's dumb. Because I could have a kid read a paragraph, what did he read? I don't know, but I read it fast. I, I don't get that. But for us, for me, I can say those things, but whenever I get to this, so for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That gives me comfort, and that gets me going in the right direction. So, thank you. Amen.